In this video, I will show you how I made this artwork. You might find one of these tips and tricks useful in the future. So make sure you stick till the end and without any further, let's start with the video. So first I start with a little sketch so I can just um, find a direction for my artwork so I can follow uh, later on. Uh, it's not uh, too similar to the final result, but I was just trying to find a, an idea to go with so uh, this is what I got and here's the stock images that I got from Adobe stock all the links are going to be down in the description and speaking of stock images let me tell you about new stock where you can find the perfect fitting stocks to use in digital art if you are looking for action models nature elements 3d models of people creatures and a lot more you can check new stock website not only that, but let me introduce you to the new realistic AI generated models like this samurai you are seeing right here. And there is a lot more to be made. So make sure you visit new stock and without any further ado, let's continue with the video. Uh, by the way, this artwork is inspired and I'm going to show you in the uh, montage uh, where I uh, inspired it from and all of that. Here I'm using a brush that I made from uh, the grass uh, making the brushes uh, is easy but if you don't know uh, you can check my course or I can f do a video in the future telling you how to uh, make brushes from uh, textured grounds or something like that this PSD file was a mess because uh, usually I uh, place all my objects and then I start fixing the values and the colors but with that artwork i started fixing the values and the colors uh, immediately uh, after adding the objects so this is why i'm not filming with the screen because there is a lot of things going on and it will take a lot of time to explain some of things but one of the most important techniques that i'm going to uh, tell you about is that technique that i'm using right now which is so i painted with a a brush, uh, a grass brush, and then I used the pattern to add the texture, and it was another image of a grass field, and and then I matched the colors uh, of that grass with the rest of the ground, and I'm painting the lighting with a uh, curves adjustment layer, and then I add the brightness just to add uh, more brightness because it was just adding the colors, and I'm using the grass technique again. And here I just added the color of the sky to the water bottles and of course the tree shadow and I used the iris blur to add the uh, blur at the end of that uh, shadow and here I'm adding the model and I'm painting the shadows to his uh, left side because my light source is coming from the right side. I use the curves adjustment layer to add the color of uh, the sun and after that I add exposure to make it uh, more brighter and I'm using the same technique for the shadows adding the shadow and then I use the iris blur to add the blur the depth to that shadow and then I select it and I add uh, a exposure adjustment layer and I make it darker and then I remove that shadow that I made in the first place so most of the uh, objects that you see me adding right now like this path or the mountains will be deleted later because I, I am just experimenting just to build the scene and whatever works I uh, keep and what doesn't work I remove uh, later and replace it with another thing As you can see here, I added a brightness, a brightness adjustment layer just to make places brighter. In some certain areas. And that leaves is one of the objects that I'm going to delay later, but let's keep it to that time. And here I'm painting the lighting on that rocks. Just using a curves adjustment layer. Painting the lighting on that grass field, that front grass, uh, was the hardest thing because uh, as you can see it's not a one layer, it's like three uh, four layers in one uh, place so it was hard for me to decide which layer is I'm adding the lighting to so 
at the end it will come together but right now I'm placing more objects to build the scene I keep coming back and forth to the uh, front grass field because as I said before it's the hardest thing uh, out of them and here I'm using the technique again to build the uh, base on that bottom areas of the house just so it doesn't look like it was just uh, put in there uh, just cut it and put it there because uh, you need you need to make it realistic like some grass going into uh, the bottom areas of it and here I'm adding more gra grass and plants at the uh, front areas and by the way these houses I'm adding right now is 3D models that I uh, made with Blender I might uh, include them in the description for free if you want to experiment with them and here I'm using the clouds from the lesson that I uh, added before on to how I add realistic clouds to your scene and you will find the link of that in the description down below as I said before some uh, objects are going to be uh, replaced later like the house uh, in the front as you can see uh, it was another house and then I chose to uh, replace it with that because that works uh, better If you want to know more about that grass technique, let me know in the uh, comment down below so I can uh, make a tutorial for it. If you have made it this far into the video, I'm just here to remind you to subscribe to the channel and let's keep going. Here I'm using the bevel and emboss to the uh, fence in the front just to make, just to add some rim light to that wood uh, uh, areas. Here I'm just experimenting with uh, different mountains to see if they work on this scene or not. This one worked at the back. Here I'm painting more clouds to add some atmosphere to it. Here I'm painting the lighting on the house mainly just because the lighting from uh, Blender didn't work uh, well with the uh, lighting in this scene so I tried to paint it with the uh, tight brush. Here I'm adding uh, grass to the front just to uh, add that border or that edge to the uh, grass field in the front because uh, in the first one it was uh, going uh, inside the other field which make it, made it look like it's one just one image so I tried to separate them with uh, another grass image as you can see and here I added another grass to uh, the first uh, field just to match it with the grass in the uh, back hills I try to add uh, more sheep just to help the scene because why not? Matching these sheep was the hardest part and to match the uh, lighting with the uh, lighting in my scene too because as you can see it was it was not matching too well so uh, I took my time with it and I used the curves and the exposure and the brightness to do that. Here I added a black and white adjustment layer just to fix the values. And here I tried to add uh, a realistic uh, plants to add that mouse effect to the house but it didn't work so I just decided to remove it and paint it with the grass brush later.
as I told you before here, I'm adding grass just to add that uh, edge to separate the front uh, hill uh, from the other hills. And here I added this tree at the top uh, left. And because I added that tree, the other leaves didn't work, so I just removed them. And again, I didn't find a good mountain to put in the back right there, so I decided to paint it later. And here I'm adding more sheep to the scene. It might look like it's not much right now, but with some painting, as I, I as you can see right now, I'm painting the uh, details with the brush. I'm using the uh, grass brush to uh, paint on the brush, and another brush I got from Derham from uh, Deviant Art to paint on the house and the model and the sheep. And here I'm painting the uh, plants and the grass that's or the moss that's growing on the house manually with the uh, brush. And what I'm doing here is I'm making uh, the color brighter and darker uh, using that color menu and in the uh, uh, top right to make it darker and then I paint the mid-tones and then I paint the highlights. And here I'm painting the hill right there because I didn't find a good mountain image to match it. And what I'm doing is I just sample from an area and then paint on it and I sample and then paint and I'm doing that over and over just to add that painting look to it, that painting effect. Uh, and also because I want to hide the fact that these houses uh, are made in 3D, they look like they were made in 3D, so uh, the paint over will help uh, hide that just a bit. And I'm doing the same for the model. And as you can see, I changed his clothes because that uh, lined uh, texture clothes didn't work with the image. It looks it looks uh, like it was modern. So yeah, I made it uh, with no lines just for the sake of the uh, medieval uh, feels to the image. And here I'm, I'm painting uh, flowers, red flowers on that. Uh, grass that's growing on the house just for some details and I'm doing the same with the grass here I'm adding some texture to the house walls because again as I told you it was 3d and I wanted to hide that and I'm doing the same to the uh, other houses and as you can see before I painted on the uh, tree at the top right with a brush that I found in the Deram uh, collection. I, if I remember, I will put the link of that brush many uh, brush collection uh, in the description. And more paint over just to add that painting feels to the image as you can see. And here I'm trying to fix that area that didn't work with the rest of the image and as you can see I'm adding just with the uh, grass uh, brush just to help separate the front hill from the other hills and also to add the lighting and match the color with the other hills too. Here I'm adding more details like a light rays and some things like that. That was it for this image. This was the end of this episode and if you like it, I'm sure you'll like the previous one, which is the Samurai Showdown Photoshop plus Blender tutorial. And also follow us on our social medias. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.